Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. My name is Pastor Varney. For those of you that may not know me, I'm the youth and young adult pastor here. And I count it a huge, huge privilege to stand before you and deliver God's word. But before I do so, we received a word for somebody watching online. Yeah, those of you that are watching online, the Lord cares as well, and he has a word for you from our Pastor Gletty. This message is especially for somebody who's online, and it's somebody you don't usually watch the show. At me. <laughs> huh. Yeah, it's a show for the Lord. <laughs> you don't usually watch the service. I don't know how many times you watch, but you're not a person who watches regularly. And what I saw is like somebody who's smothered by the things of life. Mm. You know, your confession is about what God says, but your life is not like that. You're confessing all the things God says about you, but it's like the vicissitudes of life overpowering you. Mm. And the Lord wants you to hear this specifically today, mm. that he sees you. Amen. And he sees those who are waiting upon him. So you are waiting, you are confessing, Amen. you are doing all the things, but still the things of life just smothering you. People can almost ask you, but who is your God? Every day you are talking mm. about God. See your life. Mm. But God wants you to know that he's, he hears Amen. and he sees. Amen. It's a scripture we prayed on Friday. And that's the scripture the Lord wants me to tell you. It's in Isaiah. Since the beginning of time, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard Amen. about a God like you who works for those who wait Amen. on him. Amen. Now this word is for somebody online, but you can grab hold Receive of that word myself. if you are in the service yeah. today. Yeah. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let's just take 30 seconds and just acknowledge that, that word that the Lord has sent for everybody in this room and that one person online. Father, we thank you for your word. We receive your word that you care, that you're watching over our lives. Lord, even in this brief moment of time, may you remind us even through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, Bishop started a series on Easter Sunday. He's done two installments already. And if you have not had a chance to go back and listen to those messages, I admonish you, Paul says in Romans 12, in Liberia, where I'm from, he said, I beg you, go back and watch those two messages. It would change the dynamic of your faith like you've never seen before. He says something last week. He talked about the foundation of a house. If you build the foundation of the house the right way, the walls will go up with no problem. The, 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 the house will be able to stand the storms that will come against it. And in our world today, there are storms. Storms in your mind, storms in your body, storms in your pocket. Your children are stormy. Some parent almost. <laughs> Things just don't seem to want to go well. But if your house is built on the right foundation, and that foundation we're talking about this morning is the foundation of God's love. If you understand how much God loves you and the, the, the length, the breadth, the height, the width, the depth, he was willing to go to show you that love. No matter what you go through, no matter what you encounter, no matter who offends you, your house will stand. Because you know you're loved by someone who's great. And so I dare to just continue in that vein because I believe this is the word for the season. And the question I want to ask this morning is what manner of love is this? Some would say, what kind of love is this? I ain't never seen this kind of love before. I want to talk about this love. Okay? Last week we were, we were in 1 John chapter 3 and I just want to focus on verse 1 a little bit here where John the author the one who, who was also known as the son of thunder at one point right that, yeah, I mean he, he wanted problems you know, some people don't like problems John obviously and James obviously wanted problems they said you Samaritans you don't want us to come into your town we'll call down fire remember Elijah I know Elijah <laughs> we related so I'm gonna call and Jesus said you know not the spirit that you are of and so this is the same John who then reflects on how much God loved him 
through Christ, and, and, he's, and he begins to write, and he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed, somebody say bestowed, on us, that we should be called children of God. You need to ask the person next to you, do you know who my father is? <laughs> do you know who my daddy be? That's not proper English, but I will give it to you this morning. Do you know who my father is? Do you understand whose family I belong to? You see, when we forget who our father is, we begin to act like somebody else. When we forget who our father is, we begin to walk out a line of the inheritance. But if you will continue to remember who your the reason why Jesus was so successful in ministry is because he constantly kept his eyes on his father. He said, I never do anything outside of what I've seen him do. He, as a man, the son of man, was constantly reminded of my, I, I, I'm a son of God. I belong to the father. The father has sent me. He reminded himself constantly. He was conscious of the fact. So even when Satan showed up in Luke 4 and said, are you? Questioning his identity. Guess what? He didn't even argue about his identity. He said, go back to where it is written. Somebody hear me. Whenever the enemy comes to, to, to question you or causes a thought to enter your mind, you see, he's really subtle. He's not going to come broad day. He's going to begin to speak to you and give you little thoughts and little nuances of confusion and doubt and say, guess what? You don't really matter. Guess what? You're nothing. You're insignificant. After all, your father left your mother. You grew up in a household where there wasn't any, you know, it was dysfunctional. But if, <laughs> I like that liar. If, <laughs> If you have entered into his family, it does not matter what your former, I said former, family was or is. You are now in a new family and that father is not going to abandon you today. You are now in a new family and that father is not going to turn his back on you today. So you need to understand who your father is. And the question is, what manner of love is this now I love how Bishop broke it down a couple of weeks he said he said this love is extravagant love oh man he's wasteful man if you're not experiencing the one songwriter said the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God that sounds like extravagant love to me it chases you down fights until you look this I'm not singing the song I'm just saying what the songwriter said Leaves the 99. You didn't even earn it. You do not deserve it. Yet he still gives it to you. That's extravagant love. But in case you're not satisfied with extravagant, he said it's extreme. Which means it goes beyond expectations. It pushes through. When somebody says, I'm extremely angry with you, that means get away from them. Yeah, when they show you your face, believe it. Their face, believe it. I'm a, no, he's extremely in love with you. Like this love knows how to transcend your faults, past, present, and future. Extreme. You say, but Pastor V, that's too for the, the last one is the one that blows my mind. It's eternal. Now, when you think about it, when we enter into eternity, the only, you, you won't need faith anymore. How many of you know you won't need faith? You will see him as he is. So you're no longer needing to believe that he exists because you will see him. You will no longer need hope because hope is one day I'm expecting something, but you will be experiencing the thing that you expect and somebody hear me. Your hope won't be necessary, but the one thing that will remain is love. <laughs> the reason why the angels and the 24 elders are just blown away by him is because every moment in eternal time they get to see another aspect of this love this love has no ending I know you had a week like me where you made some mistakes and you thought God stopped loving you that is a lie from devils and demons because the love say the love is eternal I told you, go back and listen to those two messages.
Because my goodness, it was so and is so loaded with truth. And we talked about the fact that that foundation is necessary if you're going to grow in your faith. Now, here's the thing that I want us to consider when I talk about what kind of love. This kind of love that we're talking about, this extreme, this, this extravagant, this, this eternal love, this love has to be driven by will. It has to be driven by will. It has to be driven by desire. Nobody stuck God up one day and said, you must love this sinner. I hope you're hearing me this morning. Nobody forced him to love you. He willed, he purposed in his heart that I will love you regardless. Before you even existed, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. He made up his mind. His will is all intrinsically wrapped up in this kind of love. It was his desire from the beginning. So there's nothing that I can do to undo what is done. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what you think you have done or you can do. His will from time in eternity past was to love you. His love is driven by his will. Now, where there is no will, say where there is no will, to act on the love we profess, that love is very limited. Where there is no will to act. You see, God loves you, but do you willingly respond to that love? You're only going to enjoy that love when you make up your mind to enjoy that love. Your will has to be involved. If his will is involved, then my will has to be involved. Will equals desire. He desires to love me, so therefore I must desire to respond to his love. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I just want to. Okay? Now, I love what the scripture says here. It's in uh, for, uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, 13. The scripture says, but as many, say as many, as received him, to them he gave the right. Say, I've got the right. If you do not know your right, you will live in the wrong. For as, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become something. He gave you the right to become something. Sometimes we use our right for, for answered prayers only. So I come and I exercise my right only when I want stuff from him. But that's a, look man, you cannot be an American citizen living like you're somewhere still in Africa. Now there's nothing wrong with my beautiful continent, please don't get it twisted. But there are just some benefits here. The reason why many of us have migrated here. I mean, even from Columbus's time, they migrated here. Okay, let me get. There's just some benefits here. And now that you're here, you cannot bring your currency from your country here to function. I'm talking about your right. The currency that we have has our father's face on it. He gave you the right to function in his name. Uh, if you don't know how to function in his name, you're mismanaging your rights. The scripture says he gave us the right to become children of God. Now, what do I do to, 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 to get that right? I simply have to believe in his name. That's open to any culture, any nation, any people, any tongue, anybody, any, anyone can get it. To believe in his name. Go to verse 13. Now listen to this. Listen to how he did it. It says, who were not born, not of blood, nor of the will. I talked about will earlier. The will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. God willed you into his presence. God willed you into his family. That will was driven by love. And what drives that love is his will. Are you hearing me? So you being a child of God was a decision that he made. We're going somewhere. Now, here's the reality. If he's my father, and this father is the one who said, let there be and there was. Is there anything too hard for God this morning, somebody? Is there anything too difficult for your father this morning? I hear you saying no. I, do you believe that this morning? Is there anything that you're facing that seemingly is out of your control? 
Yes. But is it out of his control? No. That's who your father is. Your father gave birth to you by his will. Your father is unstoppable. Your father is undeniable. Your father is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Your father is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. Your father is the eternal one. The one who existed before there was. I'm talking about your father this morning. Who loves you. Now I ask the question. How many of you believe that God can do the impossible? And I guarantee you everybody in this room will stand and say yes. And the scripture says it well. It says it well. In Ephesians 3.20 it says, Now unto him that is able to do, exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you. Do you know that power is the right he's given you? The fact that you are a son, there is a power working inside of you. Whether you're female or male, you are a son. FYI. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, nobody has a problem saying he's able. But I promise you, all of us, including myself, we have a little struggle in this area, and I believe that's, the Lord, that's what the Lord wants to deal with. We don't struggle with the fact that he's able. We struggle with the fact that he's willing. Mm-hmm. I love it when Pastor Gladys, she, sometimes she says this when she's leading prayer. She said, not only is he able, but he's willing. I'm talking about what kind of love is this? God all-powerful is willing to deal with you and me. In spite of the way you acted this week to your spouse. In spite of the fact that you disrespected your boss with your holy self. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about y'all. So you don't say, oh, the pastor over here getting in your business. He is willing. You see, when I look at myself in the mirror, I see my inabilities, my flaws, and my failures of my past and present. But when he sees you, he sees his son. When I look at myself and I think about all of the things that I did when I had no business doing it, and sometimes I say, oh, the pastor preaching, but in my mind there are things happening. He sees it. He sees your thoughts. He knows your actions. But he's willing. Tell the person next to you, he is willing. The love of God is willing to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> Are you hearing me this morning? So let's talk about his willingness. Because you know that's the one lie Satan told Adam and Eve that caused them to fall. If, did, you know all these questions if God said did God really say the very thing that he tricked them with they already had he told them God doesn't want you to be like him they were already like him because they were made in his image and in his likeness and he caused them to question his willingness there are two stories I want us to look at here this morning in this brief moment in time say my God is willing say he's not only able but he's willing. <laughs> John said, this is the confidence that we have. Where's your confidence this morning? That whatsoever I ask according to his will, it has to be within his will for you to see it. What is his will concerning you this morning? One area I firmly believe is he wants to see you healed. Ah. Uh. Somebody hear me. You came here this morning and maybe it's not in your mind. Maybe it's in your body. Maybe it's not in your body. Maybe it's a family member. Wherever you are, even if you're online, whatever spectrum you fall along, whatever line, he is willing to heal you. And I'll show you the proof at the end. But the first story I want us to consider is found in Matthew chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4 quickly. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew 8. The scripture says Jesus has just come down from the mount. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. If he had a TikTok account back then, he would have had over 1.5 billion followers. <laughs> How many followers you got on your social media? Uh-huh. Some of y'all, okay, anyway, <laughs> keep moving. And behold, a leper came, and what did the leper do? 
somebody. What did the leper do? Listen, here's the scenario. Jesus is coming down the mountain and there are throngs of people following him. But out of nowhere, you see, you got to know how to come out of the crowd. If you've got some needs, you can no longer afford to stand behind and say, maybe Jesus will do something. You got to step out. And how do you step out? You step out in worship. It said a leper came out of the multitudes. And it said, and he worshiped him. You see, your worship has a voice. <laughs> and it's praise and worship team. They're doing their thing. And you over here, sorry for the expression, you moo moo. You're not saying anything? Your mouth closed, you're too cool to worship? I ain't trying to sweat in this suit. You know what I'm saying? I just paid all this money for this suit. You better worship the king. If you want to see God move in this season of your life, you better not be silent. You better not enter his presence with your mouth sealed. You better open your mouth saying some things, knowing who he is, knowing what he can do, knowing what he has done. You have to enter into worship saying some things. This man was a leper. As a leper, he had no business being in the public. Oh, somebody hear me. He had no business being around other people. After all, the issues that he had isolated him from his family members. Hey, leprosy? I mean, your nose falling off, your ear falling off. You have to wear raggedy clothes so you are identified. And every time you showed up, you had to say, unclean. Un Can you imagine walking to work tomorrow? I got issues. <laughs> I got issues. I struggle with depression. I mean, hello. Can you imagine how low he must have felt as a leper? But Jesus, the willing one, Jesus, the able one, Jesus, the loving one, Jesus, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He showed up and the leper showed up. And the Bible says, the leper came, worshipped him, worshipped him, worshipped him. And this is what he said in his worship. Lord, if you are willing. <laughs> if you are willing, you can make me clean. <laughs> Somebody say if. Somebody say if. So it's as if they say he entered into worship with questions. He came into the presence of God, not too sure. I mean, he knew God could do some things. But he wasn't too sure, Malaika. He knew that God was able to do just what he said he would do. But he looked at his condition. He said, I only got one good finger left. Look at his face. I can't even breathe straight. <laughs> We had COVID for years and it's still kind of hanging around and we're isolated. He had been isolated. He has struggled, but I'm sure his depression level was on a different level. Mental health crisis was real for him. So at this point, look at his condition. He said, if you are willing. But he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. He said, you can make me clean. You see, if you get stuck at if, you won't see the breakthrough. If God loves me, if God loves me, yes, he understands your if, but you got to know he can. <laughs> Somebody hear me this morning. He understands your questions. God has not moved, up, you know, his, 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 my doubts don't stop him from being God. My doubts can't hinder his love. He said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. So his worship was, a cry for help. Look at the next verse. Then, oh, this Jesus is something else. Then, oh, say he's something else. Say, say he's something else. When the man came worshiping, when the man came confessing, then. <laughs> when the man came acknowledging, when the man came bowing, then. You see, there is a system to miracles. You've got to understand. He's present. He's ready. He's available. The man cried out. The man worshipped. Then 
Jesus put out his hand and touched him. Then Jesus responded to his worship. Then Jesus showed up to his situation. Then Jesus, I'm telling you, somebody, this is your then Jesus moment. Then Jesus moment. You better grab it because you have worship, you have confessed. Then Jesus. You see, when faith is released, grace is received. When faith is released, grace is attained. Grace is always available, but faith has to reach out. Then, then, Jesus put out his hand and touched him. Now, here's the funny thing. Jesus being a rabbi, being a teacher, he should know better. Let me move from here. He should know better. He knows the law. The law says, don't touch him. The law says, he's unclean. The law says, seven days and then all this stuff he has to do. But listen to what grace can do. Listen to what grace can do. Listen to what grace can do. Grace will transcend the law. Grace will transcend the law. Grace will go bypass the law. Grace showed up and said, I know, I know the law says, but I want to touch you. Ah, I know, 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 but I am grace. I'm resurrection. I'm life. Let me touch you. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Hey, the law said don't touch him. He's unclean. But this morning, love is touching you. Hallelujah. <laughs> then Jesus put out his hand. Somebody say, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all floods my soul. Somebody, something happened. And now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. Jesus, he will touch you. If you dare to worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody listen to me. He is healing you. There is healing in this place. Receive it. Receive it. I don't know what you came here with. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. It's for you. Take it. Take it. Take it, 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 take it. It's for you. That's what love can do. Jesus. <laughs> My God. Okay. Okay. It says, then Jesus put out his hand, Dr. Abifarian, and touched him saying, listen to what Jesus said. I am willing. There's no if in the matter. I am, I'm not just able, but I am willing. Somebody hear me this morning. Stop questioning whether he is willing. By all means, know this morning, he is willing. Love 316, he is willing. If Jesus was not willing, why in the world would he leave his throne? Consider the implications. If God was not willing, why would he send his only begotten son? He didn't have a spare son. <laughs> he didn't have a backup plan. That was his only plan. God took a risk on your behalf. Do you know if Jesus had, had messed up the mission, that was it? Do you understand what I'm saying? If Jesus had faltered on the mission, we would be eternally damned. Are you hearing me? That was his only option. But thank God he didn't fail. Ah, thank God he didn't fail. He didn't fail then, and he's not failing today. What kind of love is this? What manner of love is this? What in the world do you mean by this? 
Hallelujah. And the scripture says immediately. Somebody say immediately. immediately. Not the next day. You see, some things will take time. Some things has to go through a process. I don't believe that God is not willing to do instantaneous miracles. But some of us need to grow up a little bit. Mm. It's about our faith. God wants to grow you up. You know, only children get what they want all the time. Me, 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 mommy, me, mommy, me, mommy, give me blow pop, blow pop. Me, mommy, me, mommy, give me toy, toy. But at some point, you've got to leave the Gerber lifestyle alone. It's time to grow up. So there are some things you're going to learn how to pray a little bit longer for. Because he wants to build, oh, we said this during the prayer retreat. He wants to build capacity. He wants you to be able to be, to be not, it's just not a sprint, this is a marathon. If you do five miles, that's cool. But 26, are you not prepared? You will run out of gas on the road. So some things takes time. You might see a small little, you know, Elijah, he said, I just see the cloud the size of a fist. That's all you need to see. You don't need everything at one time. There's a time and a season and a place where that little cloud will be like, but there's also a time, a season, and a place where immediately, suddenly, that's it, Pastor G, suddenly, that, and I believe some of you, if not all of you, have entered into suddenly. Hey, Anita, where's Anita? You know what I'm talking about. Suddenly, yaba. suddenly, immediately, without a waste of time, suddenly are you willing I am be it unto you according to your faith I wish I had time <laughs> that's the G our, our Online audience, I understand why Bishop struggles up here. Because there's just so much in the word for you to ascertain. There's just so much that you can chew on. But I'll give you my three second, three minute next story and then I'm out of here. Right after this miracle of this man, if you read the rest of the story, Jesus told him, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And offer up the, 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 the required offering. Read Leviticus 13 and 14. It will blow your mind the kind of things that people had to go through. You understand? Okay? So you had to go, you had to tell. You see, when God does that miracle for you, open your mouth and testify. Don't hold it back. Somebody's miracle is tied to your testimony. Uh, somebody's breakthrough is tied to your confession. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So Jesus said, don't stand here and make tents. Go and testify about what I've done for you. Yeah, so he left. And then right after that, the Bible says there was a Roman centurion. This man had no right to talk to Jesus. <laughs> he had no right he was not a covenant man. He was not a Jew. He had no business coming. But sometimes you got to know how to bypass protocol. Ah, you got to know how to step the blood, get the lady with the issue of blood. Get out of my way. I don't need to know who's here. If I touch him, bypass protocol. He was an enemy of the state. Yet he came to Jesus. And he said, he said, go to, the, go to verse 6. He came pleading with him, saying, now, for those of you that are intercessors, don't stop praying for people. Don't stop praying for people. Some of you got family members that are stuck in a mess. Don't stop praying for people. Don't stop bringing their name to the Lord. Don't stop bringing them to the throne. Don't stop. At some point, you will see the breakthrough. This man didn't come here for his own issue. The centurion came because he had a servant who lied sick. But I love his testimony. He said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. Go to verse 7. 
And Jesus said, what did he say? I will come and heal him. I told you, he is not hesitating in this season. He wants to come and heal you now, 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 now. And by his stripes, you are already healed. He says, I will come. But then listen to the testimony of a man who didn't know protocol as far as the Jewish rules. The centurion answered and said, Lord, he identified who he was. He said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. I know my issues. I worship idols. I do all kinds of things. I'm not, he probably he said, Lord, that's a whole different story. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only, but only, but only, you see the word has power, but only, but only, but only, speak a word, speak a word. Oh, I don't know what words you need this morning, but speak a word and my servant will be healed. Speak what he asked him to say, Lord, whatever you say, I agree with it. He didn't put words in Jesus' mouth. Oh, that's good. He said, Whatever you say in your word, if, 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 if it's for me to go and dip seven times like the Old Testament, I'll do it. Whatever you require, you have to do what he requires. Stop bringing your stuff to him, he knows better than you. Pray according to his word. That's why this Bible reading plan is important. Because when you know the word, you can intercede accordingly. When you know the word, you're not just praying random, oh Lord, thank you for the chicken, thank you for the burger. No, you are praying in according to his will. And this man was praying according to his will. Verse 9. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes. To another, come. And he comes. You see, you got to know your authority. You got to know your right. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. Verse 10. <laughs> when Jesus heard. You see, he's a speaking spirit that hears as well. When Jesus heard it. He said, hold up. Wait, just one minute. Who your mama? Who your daddy? Where you come from? You don't even belong to my tribe. You're not a part of the 12. You must be the 13th. You must be a believer. From harvest, that's right. He's a harvester. He marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. This man astonished the Lord. How? By simply saying, I don't even need your physical presence. I just need a word. I just need a word. I just need a word. Somebody hear me this morning. You may not see him physically. He may not be here. But you have to understand he loves you. He's able and he's willing. He loves you. He's able and he's willing. He loves you. He's able and he's willing. I want to end on verse 13. I want you to see the outcome. Verse 13. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to the centurion, <laughs> go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Listen to this, so. And his servant was healed that same hour. Suddenly, Pastor G. I mean, not a minute late, not a minute early, that same hour hour this same hour hey, this same moment if you were dare to believe that he loves you if you were dare to believe that he's able if you were dare to believe that he's willing this same hour you are going to have a testimony thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus now here's the interesting part. Love plus ability plus willingness 
which if you like acrostics like I do, spells law. Love. You see, there's a law to love. Love needs to be an ingredient. The one who's loving you needs to be able and willing. But when love, ability, and willingness meet, you know what happens? There's an increase in confidence. There's an increase in confidence. Don't allow the enemy to rob you of your confidence of him. You have to know he loves you today. You have to remember that he's able, but not just able, he is willing. This morning is simple. I believe the Lord is healing, will heal, wants to heal. And some of you came here this morning with some brokenness and some hurts. Some of you watching online or in, in this room this morning, you have never given your life to Christ. You've been around him like the multitudes were around him. But you've never stepped out like the leopard to say, I, I, I'm not worthy. Look at me, I'm all in pieces. I have, I, if I die, I have nowhere to go. I want to speak to that person this morning. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're watching online or you're in this room, if you've never, ever, 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 ever given your life to Christ and you are not a part of this family where you get to call our Abba, your Abba, our Father, your Father, Without shame, without hesitation, I want you to raise your hand high. I want to pray for you. Pray with you. Raise your hand high. Bless you. I see you. I see you. I see you. If you're online, that's your situation. Put, I need help in that chat this morning. And it's simple. I want you to pray with me. Church, I want you to join them also. Those that have their hands raised that want to enter into this family. And I want you to let's pray together. Say, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we come knowing that we cannot save ourselves. Knowing that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Knowing that you are the only way to the Father this morning. Lord Jesus, I confess I cannot save myself and I need salvation. Come into this body. Take over this life. I confess you as Lord and Savior. Today, I renounce my crooked past and I embrace your brilliant future. Holy Spirit, here's my body. Here's my mind. Here's all of me. You can have it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 If you're in this room and you made that your prayer, here at Harvest, we have an incredible, first of all, I want to say welcome to the family. So clap for, for that sister, that brother, that, that, that's now a new family member. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices when one soul gets saved. So there's a party happening right now on your behalf. Hallelujah. But here we have, an, we have incredible opportunities to be discipled, to learn and to grow in this newfound faith. Okay? If you gave your life to Christ, I want you to text to our church's number. Can you put up the slide? If you don't mind. Text info to the church's number. And there's a prompt there for, for discipleship. Okay? We have an incredible set of teachers and mentors here that would love to work with you. Please take advantage of what we offer here at Harvest. God is faithful. In Jesus' name, amen.